What's up everybody? Today I'm going to show you how to download tracks and set them up in Ableton to get ready for a worship service. Ableton is such a great tool for running tracks and so I just wanted to show you my method of setting them up in Ableton. Everyone has a slightly different way of doing it but I'm going to show you the whole process from downloading them from multi-tracks or any other website that sells multi-tracks and then setting them up in an Ableton session to play back during a worship service. Alright, let's jump into it. All right, so first of all, let's hit up multitracks.com. So this is such a great website and they have a ton of tracks. They have a lot of other resources as well as chord charts and other things. What you can do is you can search for a song. If they have it, it'll pop up. So I was doing Battle Belongs by Phil Wickham. It's like one of my new favorite worship songs. Uh, they have a couple options on here. So the first thing is you can download the whole multitrack. So you get at everything and you can preview it. So here's a preview of Battle Belongs. This is the all of the multi-tracks. And then you can like sell the different things, which is pretty cool. Bass, synth bass, right? Uh, now, the problem is it's a little pricey, so if you're using the Multitracks app, I think it's called Playback, I believe. Anyway, it's $17, but since I use Ableton, if you're using another software, it'll be more. They're normally like $37, but since I already bought the custom mix version, this is it's saying I can upgrade it for only $17. That's actually a really positive thing. I didn't realize I never tried to do that before, but that's something good to know. So if I were to just pick another song, let's do another song first. So let's just do, okay, what a beautiful name. So what a beautiful name, as you can see, if you wanted to get the multi-tracks, so this is all the multi-tracks for what a beautiful name, and it's $39. So. It's a little pricey, but I wanted to show you this cool custom mix option. So we go back to Battle Belongs, and there is a custom mix option. So if you know you have the same band pretty much every Sunday, uh, you know what musicians you're gonna have, then you can use this custom mix option, and it gives you whatever you want. So I know that we have a drummer, so we're gonna meet the drums. I know we have a bass player, so we meet the bass. Uh, most of the time they have an acoustic guitar player and then they have like nine electric guitars So I might listen to these and kind of see what what each of them are so, Usually I need the first one. It's kind of like the lead guitar We're gonna, probably gonna need, need the choir the piano we're going to mute because we have a live piano. But I love all that percussion. It gives it so much more energy when you're playing along. Multitracks.com. And then with the guitars, normally I just bring, there's nine layers. I What I did, I think on mine, is I bring them down to like, you know, 50% or something. Because it's good to have some of them, but we have a live guitar player. We don't want to take away from the live guitar player. Now they have a good backing track. Okay, they have an organ. So we usually have an organ player. And that's what, that's what this is about the mix that I went with. So anyway, I just wanted to show you that. And the cool thing is it's only $12. So you can export this mix for $12 instead of $39. So if you, for whatever reason, want you know the full track, of course it gives you more options because you have all the multi-tracks so you can change uh, what you have in the track from service to service. But if it's pretty much the same every Sunday, then you can go with this custom mix option. $12 is much a better deal than $39. So all you have to do is just download the multi-track. So with the custom mix, it, it usually takes them a while to process. I don't know if it's some kind of algorithm they have set up to process this, but it takes maybe like 10 to 20 minutes for it to process, and then they'll send you an email saying that it's ready to download. So I've just downloaded this. You get a file, I'm gonna rename it. It always just says custom mix, but this is Battle Belongs. So Battle Belongs. I'll drag it into my multi-tracks folder here, so I'll just drag and drop it so it's in the right spot. Then I'll open it up and we're ready to roll. So 
So now I opened up Ableton, this is a blank session, okay? So this is literally from scratch. This is how we do it here at Christ Tab. If you hit Tab, you bounce between this mix window. I'm gonna get rid of these MIDI tracks because I don't need them. But Tab allows you to bounce between the, uh, this is called the session view, and this is called the arrangement view in Ableton. And then we're just gonna go over here, shift and click, and you can select all the tracks on a Mac that is. So now we're just gonna drag them over. And something that you need to know is if you just don't do anything, they're just gonna line up on a single track. But if you hold down Command, Command will create as many tracks as needed. So if you have four tracks, it's gonna create four new tracks. Without Command, it's just gonna put them all in a row on a single track, but Command puts them, it lines them up perfectly and creates new tracks if needed. So we're holding Command because that's what we want. And then with the custom mix, you have the click track, you have uh, a split track with a click on the left and the track on the right. And then you have the custom mix that you ordered. Then you also have the guide. One. So what I do first is I label everything. Command R for renaming. So this is already, it actually already says click track. I'm just gonna take this thing out of the mix. Custom mix, I just call this split track. And then you hit tab, you go to the next one. So this one is, I'll just call it a mix, right? And the next one is our guide. So those are all of our tracks. What I do, I don't usually use the split track uh, but uh, I'll use all the other ones. The click track, first of all, I come over to this window. We want to pan it left, we pan, and I put the guide usually right next to the click track. Pan the guide. So the guide and the click track are both panned left. And then this other one, I'm gonna pan it right for the purposes. I just use a uh, interface that has two outputs, so we have a click on the left, the guide on the right. It'd be great. Uh, our system currently doesn't support, <laughs> we're, we're maxed, our soundboard at our church is maxed out. I'd love to do stereo output someday, but you need more than two outputs to do a stereo track plus a click. But someday we'll get there. So currently this is our setup, this is gonna work. And then some things that make it really, really helpful. Okay, so Command K. What we're gonna do here is, this is something that we do at our church and it makes a, a very useful setup for Ableton. We don't really have a separate controller, we just use the computer keypad. And Command K allows you to assign a key to a lot, of, all these parameters that are orange can be assigned. So uh, we can go even deeper, but what I do is I assign S to the stop, F for follow, C for soloing the click track and G for muting the guide. And you'll see why this is important in a second. So Command K to get back out of there. Now if I hit S, One. no matter where I am, it's gonna start at the beginning. So, okay, so before I go any further, I'm gonna save this. So Shift Command S for save. Battle Belongs 2021. And then I'm gonna save it to my desktop in the same folder that already has the multi-track. So we're gonna go into Battle Belongs and save it there. Boom. So now, now you'll see a whole multi-track session got saved in the same folder. I just like to keep everything pertaining to a certain song in the same folder. It just makes it so much easier. The reason why I set up these commands is that if I'm over here, First and we're just going along, if I stop, Wherever, wherever you started last, it's just gonna keep starting over. See how that works? Say we wanna get back to the beginning of the song, now I can just hit S and it goes, stops it, it goes all the way back to the beginning. One. Now the reason why I assigned this is because if this is off, this is like the follow button. So if for whatever reason, this is the view that we have and we continue to let it play. screen and we have no idea where we are in the song but if I hit F or this button right if I hit F now it follows the track so the nice thing about this is it keeps it centered and of course that's really important when you're playing live you're not you're not focusing on it all the time but if you happen to look over you want it you want to know exactly where you are in the song of course minus zooms out plus zooms in so minus zooms out plus zooms in the other two functions we assigned were click so soloing the click, say you're at the end of the song and you just wanted to keep the click track going. 
uh, you can do that by soloing the click. Or if for whatever reason you got off the track, but you weren't off the click, you can solo the click. Say the worship leader didn't come in at the right time. You can at least solo the click to keep the band on tempo. And you can, you can kind of jump back in later if you need to. That's why I have that C for click track to solo the click. And then for the guide, I did this recently. I, I've been muting the guide with G in case we want to do a different order of the song. The guide will always come early. You know, say you're going from the chorus to the bridge, but you wanted to do a double chorus. The guide is going to say bridge, even though if I wanted to go back and do the chorus again, I have the ability to, in the talkback, I can communicate that, but I don't want the guide saying bridge if we're actually going back into the chorus. I have the the G set up to mute the guide on certain cases when I want to go back into a different section so that the guide is not telling everybody the wrong thing in our setting. Okay, the next thing we need to do is to set up markers. Let's set up some markers here. So what you do is you got to go into this space. It's very tedious. It's like you got to see the speaker. The speaker, if you just click it, it's going to play. But if you two finger click it, you get this menu that drops down. We're not going to do a time signature change, but we are going to do a marker. So we're going to add a locator. I guess it's called a locator. You know what I did not do yet is I did not select a tempo for this song. That's important. So if you go to multi tracks, what is cool is usually they have the tempo. So right here they have D flat, BPM is 81. So I know it's 81. Up here is your tempo. You just type in 81 and we're golden. So now it should all be locked to the groove. One. So if I use the built in click track. Intro. Two. Three. Four. That's, that's another option. You can use a built in click track if it's the right tempo. Also, just having it in the right tempo makes it way better because then you can you can trigger things on the beat and it just makes life way easier. So this is our marker. So to rename it, you can go Command R and we'll say this is the intro. So I'm just going to go through and label everything. The way you know where you need to put a marker usually is that you have this guide track letting you know something's coming up. So we had the uh, intro. One, two, intro, two, three, four. And it turns out this is in the wrong spot. So I'm going to move back to the third measures where it starts. One. Because you got the two. two bar intro. Intro, two, three, four. And then we have another marker we need to add. Verse one. There's a verse. And I'm just zooming around here. Verse two. So. Pretty much every guide marker, I'm going to put a label just because it makes life easier. Interesting. There must have been a time signature change somewhere along the way. It's the first time doing this song, so we're still learning it, but I'm noticing that the markers are coming halfway through the measure. So just for my OCD, I'm going to insert a time signature change here to bar of two, four. So what you can do, this is where you do need the time signature change. So it's a one bar of two, four, and then here it changes back to four, four, I believe. So that way it just makes it so that the markers are landing on the downbeats and it just, I don't know. You don't have to do that, but for a theoretical standpoint, it makes more sense. Vamp. So one, two, one, two, three, four. One, three. two, three, four. And we're in the verse and we're on the downbeat, so it just makes more sense for me as I'm doing this. Vamp. Here we go again. So here's another time signature change. I'm going to do the same thing. So t uh, one bar of two, four, two, four, and then I'm changing it back to four, four right there. Insert time signature change, four, four. Bridge. Two, Break three, down. four, one. There we go. Perfect. Bridge starts there. If you buy all the multi-tracks, uh, like we talked about earlier, I think a lot of times they give you an Ableton session already set up, which is cool. They probably already have these time signature changes in there, but when you do the custom mix, you gotta do it yourself. Cool, so that's our song. We have all the labels that we need. One last thing I do before 
we're ready is I like to assign these different labels, these sections of the song to my keypad. Usually I'll start with verse one is number one. To open up this menu, you can either click this button right here, which is the, the same deal, or you hit command K and it opens up this menu. So basically all you have to do is you select a, a parameter and then you assign a key to it. So verse, the marker for the verse, I'm gonna go one. And I'm not gonna necessarily do every one, I just wanna be able to scrub along. So I'm gonna go two for the second verse, three for the chorus, four for the third verse. I might skip that one, because by here we should be fine. Five for the chorus, six for the bridge, one, seven for bridge two, eight for bridge three, for building, and then I'm gonna do nine for the chorus, maybe zero for the outro. Command K to get out of that menu. So now, uh, this is so great, because when we're in practice, say we we're practicing along and then we get the chorus and the singers are like, wait, what was it? where are we in part? So we have to stop and then we have to explain something to the singers, the band, and then we let's say we want to come back into the chorus. You just hit three and then we jumped ahead to the chorus. So now we start going. We're on the chorus. All right, let's go ahead and start with the verse again. So we're gonna hit number one, we jump back to the verse one, two, here we go. We're in the verse. Or let's say uh, we wanna do this bridge one more time. Okay, this is what we were talking about. Let's do the bridge. Let's see, which one is that again? It's number eight. So this bridge right here is number eight. Let's say you get to the last bridge and you wanna do it again. The worship leader gives you a sign. So here we go. We're gonna mute our guide because we don't want it to say vamp at the end of the section. Build. You're building, but we don't want it to say vamp right here. So we're gonna hit G. It's gonna mute our guide. And then we're gonna hit number eight. And it loops back to that bridge again. So there you go. Now we're playing the bridge. And then maybe I turn the guide back on by hitting G. So the guide just turned back on. And we're gonna go into the rest of the song. We're still on the track the whole time. We're still on the track. We're building. One, chorus. two, chorus. Now we're in the chorus. And the whole time we're on the track, a lot of times what happens is if if we're flowing, a lot of churches don't maybe have enough knowledge about Ableton to where they can stay on the track the whole time. But Ableton is set up to be so flexible. So you could literally be on the track the whole time as long as you have all the right parameters in place. And that I, I found this to be the best way to stay on the track, even though we're going into the different sections of the song. This gives me pretty much all the options I need with this setup. And yeah, I hope you found this video helpful. If you found anything valuable in this video, please like it. Maybe leave a comment about uh, videos you want me to do in the future. And I'm, I'm always wanting to hear from you guys and, and I'm trying to provide as much value as I can. I'm posted every Friday, sharing tips and tricks on Ableton, Pro Tools, keyboard, different things involving church music. So make sure you comment about what videos you want and I'll, I'll definitely look into doing some videos on some recommendations from this community. So thanks so much for watching today and we'll see you in the next one.